Hello, y'all. Dr. D here. It is tea time with Dr. D. I always have to wait for this to buffer to make sure I'm on. There we go. Hello, tea time with Dr. D. All right, so Dr. D got a big cup of tea for y'all today. All right, look at that. It says mama needs co some coffee. I don't know why folks don't have a tea cup. I need a tea cup. Y'all can send me a tea cup. I went crazy in the store yesterday to get some teas, uh, different teas. He was getting bored with summer tea, so this is what I got for y'all today. Ginger, peach, turmeric. Okay, ginger is good for the digestive system. Turmeric is great for um, inflammation, right? Um, and if you get turmeric supplements, get good ones. You could take that instead of taking a Tylenol, NSAIDs, or taking aspirin. Those are both not good for you. I mean, yep. So, and who doesn't like peach? All right, and then we have this Darjeeling. Ooh, I hope I'm saying that right. I just got that. It was, it looked, it looked yummy. And it smells yummy. It's a black tea. Black tea is also amazing. All right, and then I got an African tea. It's Numi Rubos. Rubos? It's an African brew. I don't know. I haven't really researched this one yet. Um, but I know it's amazing. Um, it says it's a relaxing tea. So got a little bit of that. Black tea has caffeine in it. Okay, again, not as much as coffee. And then finally, this hibiscus. And hibiscus is great for the heart. So that's what D is drinking today. All right, and I got that brewing. And I wanted to chime in with y'all super really quick um, before I get into my day. All right, and talk about sleep. Um, so I've been getting hit up in the DMs about my newsletter. I've been getting hit up in the DMs about mental health tips. And so I want to bring those, that to you guys, right? So um, the, one of the questions that I got recently was um, about sleep, to talk more about sleep. Um, and so I wanted to share with you something that you probably don't know about sleep. You know, some people think sleep is overrated. It's really not overrated. Um, not having enough sleep is what's overrated. So here's the thing. There, was a, there are studies done. Uh, by researchers comparing uh, drunk drivers' reaction times and response times um, and responses to people who are sleep deprived. And what they found is the same, they have the same reaction. So imagine you're talking to your spouse, but you're talking to them as if you're inebri inebriated, at least you, as, as if you've been drinking. All right. Imagine um, that you have to react to your children and 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 catch them or, or or keep them from hurting themselves, but you have the reaction time of an impaired person. So sleep is very important. And so the other question that I got is how um, the person indicated that someone that they love uh, is having trouble with sleep, and also a friend of mine that I hadn't talked to in almost fifteen years. Um, let me know that they reached out to me and told me they had Parkinson's disease and one of the big struggles that they had was sleep because of the jittering and things like that. So I share with all of my clients who are sleep deprived to get a sleep regimen. Here's just a couple tips that I'm going to give you real quick. Have the same sleep and wake time. Okay, I'm not saying you have to go to bed exactly at uh, 10 o'clock or something like that, but you need to go to bed around the same time. You need to get up around the same time. What you're doing is programming your body to have a rhythm. A lot of us just, just go through our day. We get up at a certain time. We might just slap ourselves out of bed, slap ourselves in bed. That Our body doesn't work that way. It needs a certain rhythm. Think about when when, if you have any children, you know anyone have any children, when the baby comes out, the baby doesn't have a rhythm, right? The baby's been nestled in uh, this beautiful womb, but then when the baby comes out, the mother, hopefully, or the parents start to get the baby on a rhythm and a pattern so the baby knows when, when the sun is up when the sun is down and that sort of thing. So you wanna do the same thing. You also want to have a wake regimen and a sleep regimen. Don't just slap yourself out of bed. Over 20 years ago, I used to tell everybody, I'm not a morning person, I'll talk to me until after 10.30, until after I have my cup of coffee. What I didn't realize at the time because I was uneducated and ignorant about it is that it wasn't that I wasn't a morning person, it was that I hadn't uh, fully waken up. So I get up anywhere from four, 
to five in the morning and I start to wake myself up. I may lay in the bed for 30 minutes um, while I'm doing things to wake my mind up. And it's, it literally takes me about two hours to fully wake up. So you need to have a regimen. Don't, if you have to be somewhere at, I don't know, nine o'clock, don't wake up at 8.30 and think you're gonna be fully functioning because you're not, you're not gonna be fully awake. So you need to wake up, uh, give your time, body time to wake up. And body and mind, right? And your body time to go to sleep. So same thing when you go to bed. Don't just slap yourself. It's like, okay, it's bedtime. I'm done. And then people wonder why their mind races the whole night because they didn't give themselves time to go to sleep. So about an hour or two before you go to bed, do some things to wind down. Take a warm bath. Um, look at some candles. Read a, a, a novel, a, a boring novel. Don't do anything overstimulating, which brings me to my next point. Don't do anything overstimulating before you go to bed. Don't watch TV. Don't scroll social media. You know, if you're having trouble with sleep, these things keep you up. Limit the amount of caffeine that you drink. Uh, if you can eliminate all of it, that's fine. But a lot of times some of our food, like chocolate, has caffeine in it or what have you. But especially don't drink caffeine throughout the day. Don't don't just think if you drink it in the morning, it doesn't affect you. If you're uh, having trouble with sleep, you may need to eliminate caffeine altogether. You can even drink some relaxing tea. Um, some other things that you can do. If you wake up in the middle of the night, what people often do is they watch the clock. They watch the clock. They watch the clock. They watch the clock. Like, oh my God, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to be able to get in sleep. Well, instead of doing that, get up, do something boring, and then go back to sleep. It is better for you to lose 15 to 30 minutes of sleep rather than lose your whole night of sleep trying to make yourself go to sleep. Get up and go wash the dishes that you left in the sink. Get up and go clean something. Get up and read your book for a minute. What I usually do, I have, I love to play Scrabble. I'll have Scrabble on my phone. If I wake up, I'll play a couple games of Scrabble or I'll pull out my crossword puzzle next to my bed. I'll do that for 15, 20 minutes until I get back sleep and I'll fall asleep. So it's better to get four or five, six hours of quality sleep than eight hours of crappy sleep. All right, um, lastly, uh, last two things. One, do not eat before going to bed. If you're eating before you're going to bed, guess what your body's doing? It's digesting the food, so it's working. All right, so one to two hours, if, if even more, drinking going before you go to bed can also have you up at night. And lastly, um, alcohol. Alcohol before you go to bed. Now, some people can drink enough, okay, as a recovering alcoholic, I can tell you this, right, that you will black out, but guess what? You'll be up after that little blackout is over. You know why? Because alcohol causes insomnia. All right, so that's tea with Dr. D. You guys going to crush your day. I'm going to crush mine.